What's going on there folks? Good afternoon, it's the Earthmaster here on this beautiful Monday, September 12th, 2022 date. It is about 12.09 p.m. here in California. Latest quake on the Earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.2 earthquake out along the uh, western coast here of California. Latest quake up there on the map. Notice the uh, little bit of uptick up in the Alaska region. We haven't really seen a whole lot of renewed movement here around the Indonesia area, uh, considering all the uh, past earthquake activity here over the past couple days. Let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map showing the uh, last 24 hours of activity. There's that movement up into the Alaska region where they just seen a 4.0. Just outside of the strait here, this one's striking in there about 45 kilometers deep into the subduction zone here. That's the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate boundary. Subduction zone, pretty uh, large earthquakes can take place there. Uh, but for now, just a four pointer. Uh, some movement over here in Japan. We had one yesterday and then we had one uh, overnight as well. Uh, two five pointers. And one of those were pretty deep yesterday, 168 kilometers. And I was kind of expecting this shallower uh, earthquake to pop up but uh, I was ex possibly expecting it to be a little bit larger, uh, but that five pointer came in much more shallower at 10 kilometers up towards the subduction zone itself. And uh, still kind of watching this area pretty closely. It's been relatively quiet for uh, any release of uh, some built up stress. Notice over here, the Java Trench has uh, gone quiet. Also around the Papua New Guinea area where we've seen that 7.6 earthquake a couple days ago. Uh, still little aftershock sequences there within the region. Looks like uh, at least a 5.2 kicking up this morning within that uh, area. Close to where the 7.6 struck there a couple days ago. Uh, but generally, overall, things have kind of mellowed out and backed off a little bit here. Far as the uh, activity goes, we did see some further movement up north into the Philippines area. One into the Philippine Trench here had a 5.7. This one coming in early, much earlier this morning, uh, but pretty shallow at about 10 kilometers there. So uh, aside from that, the majority of this activity that you see listed here on this map is some older movement. So uh, 5.7, the latest quake there in that region of the Philippines. Down here into the Samoa area, Tonga Trench. This one uh, coming in uh, just this morning time frame of 4.6. Pretty shallow though, at about 10 kilometers. Uh, further here to the east, we're getting some movement out here on the uh, West Chile Rise area once again, right along the uh, <coughs> Antarctic and the uh, Nazca plate boundary right here. Pacific plate sits over here. Uh, sometimes these earthquakes that uh, have this little separation, the divergent boundaries here can increase stress along the South America region. Uh, so far, we haven't really seen that yet, uh, but might be something to watch here throughout the day. Uh, and then again, this ain't a really big earthquake, but a lot of times these uh, type of earthquakes here on this area of the plate and over here to the west uh, tend to put a lot of stress and strain here along the South America region along the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, some activity yesterday within this area, uh, nothing big, just a couple fours there. And again, this is from yesterday. No new activity kicking up there on the map. Over here along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge here, another divergent boundary, uh, separation of seafloor fault system out here, 4.8, and the southern Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This one kicking up this morning. Uh, let's see, far as the north and south goes, pretty quiet up and down the board there throughout the Atlantic, aside from that one. Um, some movement into the Puerto Rico area again. Uh, this one much closer to the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, this one came in. Uh, late afternoon, early evening time frame, a little 3.6. The majority of the activity overnight and this morning has been confined here to the southwestern edge of Puerto Rico. And uh, nothing's shown up there within the last hour. Far as the states go, uh, latest quakes up here on the map show around the Cedar, Utah area. Uh, right up against the uh, mountain range there. That area has seen a little bit of swarming. Uh, in the past few months or so. 
just kind of uh, been doing its thing there. And these earthquakes have been relatively shallow, uh, consistently shallow down there, or I should say just at the surface, negative 1.3, negative 3.3. So some of these earthquakes here are very, very shallow. Um, I haven't really seen any main quake. I know there's some fault systems out here. Of course, the mountainous rain, uh, ranges there do have um, you know some faults built up there have faults uh, but not for certain which fault system that's on there just something to watch it's been ongoing for quite a while no main quake yet but uh, just a pretty good amount of swarming uh, over the past few months this year one earthquake last night into the mammoth wyoming area a 2.5 this was originally a 2.0 it looks like they they may have upgraded this a little bit so there was a 2.7 that came in that they upgraded that to a 2.9 and uh, shortly thereafter there was a 2.5 so a little bit of adjustment there from the usgs let's go ahead and look at the yellowstone overview that came in late last night around the maple creek area uh, there's the 2.9 and the 2.5 uh, along with some other smaller microquakes there following those um, two earthquakes overnight uh, it's kind of been an on kind of, kind of a part of an ongoing swarm that's been occurring for the past two weeks or so now although not as intense but we still get these days where we get a couple twos popping up followed by some small microquakes and uh they're listed up there on the map that's good not a whole lot going on through the pacific northwest today got one earthquake outside of seattle that one from yesterday and a couple smaller microquakes around the Mount St. Helens area. Oregon looks pretty quiet today. One earthquake up here near Mount Shasta, 1.0 near McLeod, right at the uh, east southeastern area of Mount Shasta. Also, one earthquake here around Goose Lake, looks like outside of the Alturas area, north of there, a 0.7 at 17 kilometers. As far as Northern California goes, uh, further south, one earthquake along the Makama Fault, a little 2.2 near Willits. But uh, things just a little on the quiet side uh, around the Cascadia for now. That's up here around the Eureka area. Uh, northward, things very quiet, except for the Trimmer. Trimmer's been uh, pretty active here, down dip into this area of the Cascadia. Uh, over here, north of Truckee, north of Lake Tahoe, a couple earthquakes coming in there near... Uh, Looks like the Loyalton area, 2.7 and a 1.0. And the San Francisco Bay area, kind of shaking a little bit. Uh, they did have a 2.9 come in yesterday, uh, late afternoon, early evening time frame. It was felt uh, over the area. Looks like that struck on the Hayward Fault. This is another kind of a dangerous fault system out there. Uh, and I believe uh, one of these is definitely high up there on the list of USGS faults that pose a major um, hazard risk for the Bay Area. Of course, we got the San Andreas Fault that kind of runs through there, but uh, you got this Hayward Fault that runs right through Oakland, Berkeley, Richland, or Richmond. All these areas, nothing but people and a lot of population. So, um, you know, that's kind of a fault system. We've got to watch pretty closely there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, a couple other smaller quakes down here around the San Jose area. Or, uh, excuse me, uh, looks like, where's this at? Well, near the Santa Cruz Mountains. Not, not close to uh, too many locations there. But off the San Andreas Fault there, just by a short amount. Another small microquake there near, uh, a little bit closer to the Sunnyville area. Further south on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, there's some movement kicking up there, but not a whole lot. Mammoth Lake's seen some activity as well, but no major swarms to report. No major activity currently happening in Southern California. Latest one near Ocotillo Wells, 1.8 at 4.2 kilometers deep. Some movement over there in the Nevada area as well. Outside of Las Vegas, getting a little bit of swarming activity, it looks like, near the... Uh, Dry Lake Valley, largest one so far, looks to be a little 2.3. And some of these depths there indicating some variables. 
some pretty shallow some down there at about six kilometers or so below the surface and there is some uh, fault systems that run through here Nevada is riddled with faults all over the place oh let's see here Texas Oklahoma out there in Pecos Texas getting a little bit of activity as well no major movement just a couple twos in the mix there today and some of these these earthquakes here are older uh, from yesterday 2.5 in the Georgia area and also a little earthquake up in Tennessee no further movement to note there across the eastern portion of the country I think today uh, a couple areas we may need to watch as I mentioned here the South America region with that uh, activity kicking up here on the southeast Pacific rise or the Chile rise here and uh, possibly the northern section here of the Pacific plate things kind of lighten up as well so just be on guard there uh, again we checked out Yellowstone as far as space weather goes we are getting um, some proton events right now up at the north and the south polar regions that's going to be the uh, this area right here protons coming in um, kicking up there was a 5% chance of a proton event it looks like that is occurring currently uh, looks like we do have a little bit of solar flaring activity as well as we speak up into the C flare uh, about the C 3.6 level there has been numerous C flares popping off here over the last oh, 48 hours or so and uh, that is due to uh, a couple different regions notice the sunspot count right now there's quite a few on the visible disk uh, looking at the latest imagery here it's going to be uh, this one right here uh, 3088 this uh, sunspot that was facing us here uh, about a week or so ago maybe 10 days or so maybe more than that I can't remember exactly when but it's coming back around the bend to uh, give us possibly another show of activity that is the one that produced uh, quite a few M flares here, as I mentioned, uh, you know, within the last two weeks. So we'll watch this one. It's just barely visible here on the magnetic field image. 3088 will be newly named uh, another uh, sunspot number. But for the ones that are facing us, uh, this bad boy right here is crackling with some C flares, getting a lot of intermixing here of the blues, the, the orange there. And uh, it's kind of growing pretty rapidly. So we've got to watch that one for possibly an M flare uh, throughout the day today. And that's going to be 3098, uh, which is the one that has the most potential looking at the graph here. And these guys are showing that as well. 3098 does harbor a uh, magnetic class as a beta gamma. 70% chance for a C flare. M flare at 15% chance and X flare at 1% or less and um, that's those these sunspots right here about the only uh, two that I'm kind of watching there's 3094 that's kind of growing here but um, I think that's the only one that really poses any type of threat currently as far as any elevated flare activity goes no major coronal hole activity 23 which in the latest imagery is right here kind of on the north side of the sun I don't know if that's going to be geo effective when that comes into view into a bullseye view but uh, we'll watch that and see if that elevates any uh, solar weather conditions here across the geomagnetic forecast right now things are pretty calm far as that goes not a whole lot of aurora potential uh, and looking at the solar flare or the uh, solar weather activity the real-time solar wind stream uh, shows pretty uh, pretty calm conditions there even below the 400 km range for the speed and temperatures down there's some of that density uh, with some of the proton events kicking up here uh, at the higher latitudes things look somewhat stable there for the interplanetary magnetic field uh, aside from that density uh, proton event kind of hitting us there at the uh, higher latitudes around the polar regions uh, earthquakes Canada it is Monday so they should be operational right looks like a couple quakes up here on the globe or on the map uh, for the Canada region 
The latest one looks like a 1.5 near the Fort St. John, BC region. Very small microquake. Uh, not a whole lot going on up there in Canada recently. Sometimes they uh, they get these little events up here along the uh, northern end of the Cascadia, but things look relatively calm there for now. These are some much older earthquakes. But uh, aside from that, yeah, some of this activity here, very old uh, in the yellow circles. Uh, well, we got some uh, much cooler temperatures here today, folks, here in California. Even some rain, had a couple raindrops overnight here where I live. And uh, this is all kind of some moisture that was spinning off of uh, uh, Tropical Storm K. Kind of brought up a little bit of moisture here to Northern California, somewhat unexpected. Wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting it. But either way, it's kind of bringing some cooler temperatures. We got uh, 82 degrees out there right now. It's supposed to be about, supposed to reach up to about 93, which is cooler than 115. Uh, that, those 115 to 15 degree days did some damage to my uh, trees out here that I have. Uh, I got a couple persimmon trees and it literally cooked the persimmons. They're not ready yet, uh, but it just cooked them and kind of shriveling them up a little bit like a raisin. So I don't think I'm going to have any persimmons this year and uh, just about killed my walnut trees and it cooked them. Uh, literally, you can see the skin on there just black and dark. Same with my pear tree. I got quite a, f quite a few trees out here and the pears, ah man, it looks like somebody threw them in the oven and uh, left them in there for a little bit because they're, they're black. Not good. That uh, I hope that doesn't happen again. I'm hoping I will never experience 115 degree days again. Uh, like I say, it wasn't just one day. It was we almost had a week straight of that, and we don't normally get that out here. So, not good. All right, guys, I am off here. Got quite a bit of schoolwork to do and uh, lecture currently going on here shortly so we will be uh, back here a little bit later on this evening with a complete update unless something major happens again enjoy your day out there it is Monday and uh, we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight peace out everyone